Everyone, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Bernat. Hello. Hi. And I almost say it correctly, but I yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> so close. So for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? So my name is Bernat Agulló. I'm living in Barcelona, and um, I'm in. I am partner in a small uh, data consulting company, and we help our customers get their data right. Oh, that's just just that easy. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, my story is a bit more complex than that. Uh, I come from an engineering background, and um, and then I went to well, I, I did some Erasmus program in in mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. but then I decided I wanted something more fancy, so I went to Japan, and not only oh, wow. that, but uh, I, I did a, a PhD in sort of like. Uh, organizational behavior, so I went right into the social sciences real. Oh, wow. And somehow I managed to finish that, but uh, I also decided that this was not my thing. So after hanging out there a little longer with a, a friend I made, uh, I helped him like doing stuff in Excel and so on. And when I came back, I managed to move into the um, to uh, Excel and macros because uh, yeah, there's a lot of work there. And um, yeah. that's, uh, that's what I started really doing macros. So I just like done one before that job, but that yeah. job was like macros and Excel. So I did like for five years. I love that uh, because it's like every day I learn new stuff. Eventually I had to move out of that project and I like, well, did some other stuff. And um, at some point I joined another project where I was doing macros, but macros with a SQL server. Mm -hmm. So I learned SQL, which was very nice. And from there, I finally moved to my uh, current company. Uh, and then uh, there's where I learned like uh, integration services. And, uh, and then I did something with Tableau at the beginning. And then uh, at some point I did see Power BI. I was like, whoa, this is very nice. Mm -hmm. And I love that a lot. And then I did a project in Click and it was like, oh my God, I love Power BI so much now. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I, well, and there was a pandemic and all that. And at some point- I heard about that. Projects yeah. were yeah. like not coming that often. Yeah. And I decided, okay, well, it's no big deal. Let's learn this Power BI thing all to the very bottom of it, yeah? Yeah. So and in the process, what happened is, uh, I don't know, during the pandemic, one of the side effects is that I gave up on Facebook and I started hanging out in Twitter. It's like, okay, which I hated before. And then I was like, yeah. okay. And then uh, when I started uh, focusing on Power BI, I said, okay, let's see what's up in Power BI in Twitter. And then I found out there's like, oh, quite an interesting thing going on. And then um, I also saw that even when I posted something and I received very warm welcome, it's like, wow, this is cool and so on. It's like, wait. Wait a minute. And then I realized, okay, let's do this properly. So I started a blog. I started a Power BI only Twitter account. Actually, the other one just died. <laughs> and uh, I started being very focused on that. So I would not follow anything out of Power BI. I would not like even things that were not Power BI. I will only post Power BI stuff. And, um, and I keep focusing on, on also on, on putting stuff on, on my blog. Yeah. So and that uh, at some point started to work. So also uh, I, I did, uh, well, in this process, I, I discovered this MVP thing. I was like, oh, this is very nice. Yep. And um, okay, so let's see how this works. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I started to, to look for opportunities to share what I was doing. At the beginning, I was fine just in the hanging out in the Power BI user group in Barcelona which is a WhatsApp group, mostly. <laughs> I mean, they do have like some activities going on on Meetup, but this is a very active and very nice uh, WhatsApp group. And then um, from there, I somebody said, hey, there's this activity. Why don't you, I don't know, who's up? It was like, I don't know. I, I could do something on calculation groups, which is, was a topic that people were starting to, to think of me and calculation groups like as a together thing. And I, mm -hmm. I, because I would always post things about calculation groups. And I said, maybe I can handle like an introduction to calculation groups presentation. And I, and I did that. 
in the Power BI Bootcamp in uh, 2021. Was that your first, July, was your, first, yeah, so was that your first time presenting? I, I mean, it, I mean, you did yeah, your PhD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, so you, I, I jumped right into that. <laughs> but I mean, you with your with your education, you had a lot of experience going through and presenting and defending your work and doing that side of it. So it, it yeah. that's harder than than doing it. But it, sometimes people just make it to be so scary to do that first session, share my work. I don't want people to be critical of the project yeah, that I'm yeah. working on it. Yeah, this is something I realize in my job now with my partner, and uh, he he like wrote uh, a PowerPoint, and then I, I like, would you like some feedback? No, he gives it to me, and, and I was like, uh, this is out, 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 out. <laughs> it yeah. should be the other way, and and he has to grow used to my very extensive feedback on on anything that I'm asked about. Hey, having so, somebody to go yeah. through and do editing, that that's a cherished thing. I wish I need more yeah. of that in my life. <laughs> yeah, this is. I think it's basically what I learned in my PhD is to write properly. <laughs> that's that's it, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but this is very valuable. It's like, what do you want to say? You know, like don't go around it. Don't make words that look nice and really like be able to say, ah, this is, yeah, just a feeling word. And th th this is what you mean. Bernard, yeah. I have to tell you, I'm a bit stuck on the Japan uh, organizational management PhD. <laughs> well, don't, don't worry so, too much about it. Uh, well, yeah. well, the only reason because I so I, I absolutely love. I took Japanese. I've forgotten it all, you know. But took it when oh. I was younger. I you know, I almost moved my family there for an earlier job. Ooh. Um, Ooh. but I also so I I had I was on the fence of doing an MBA, which I ended up doing in technology management or the MAOM, and going that route because my plan was to go get a PhD and in social informatics and study collaboration technology and the impact okay. so the, well, the social impact on teams do, yeah. like so yeah, yeah. we'll have to we'll have to have a conversation separately on that yeah topic. probably yeah. Uh, that yeah. would take a long time yeah but uh well, it was very very cool i mean in this space you know, it's funny when i think it would be when you're talking about macros like so i was a hardcore excel like 30 years ago was i you know started my career as a an, an analyst and a technical writer, and the old version of Excel before the the Microsoft you know, like uh, uh, kind of rebuilt it, um, mm -hmm. and so I would build these simple macros and automate printing and table creation and right. and kind of for for publishing purposes, mm -hmm. and you know it, it it got so complex very quick, but. It almost feels like with Power Platform and with uh, all the data platform MVPs and you know it, specifically the people doing Power Platform development that mm -hmm. we're getting back into kind of where it feels like where I started in my career, which was databases everywhere, combining and integrating databases, trying to to build intelligent yeah. applications. Of course, we were there was no system or platform for building them thirty years ago. We were it was very rudimentary and uh, it, it, hmm. very messy, but it just, it feels like we're getting back into that world where everybody is kind of experimenting with building apps and creating, yeah. pulling from multiple data sources. And it, it's mean, just, an, it, it's, yeah. it's a growing area. True. I mean, what, I mean, here, the, the business that, that Microsoft is, is holding you into is that there's a lot of people waiting for the IT team to solve their problems. Mm. <laughs> and uh, they will hear, they will listen to what they have to say. And uh, they allow these, well, working solutions to be put in place. But then, of course, comes the governance. How are you going to do that? Yeah. Do you even allow the, the user to get what they want? The answer should be so yes, because at least when the IT has the time to do it, at least we'll have something that already works to, to get their hands into which is much better that we need so and so, and then when they are finished, maybe this is not needed anymore. So yeah. in the process, you'll have some solutions that will fall apart and the other ones that will stick. And so I think it's a good thing that people are more empowered to do what they want to do, but you cannot forget about doing things properly. <laughs> so you need to have a good way to do things. Yeah, you cannot leave everything yeah, the, around forever. Yeah. That's one of those big questions around your know, governance around building all these yeah. solutions. And it's, uh, not that there's one answer for that. It's not like, hey, I installed no. the governance app and we're good now. No, it's no. You know, <laughs> it takes a lot more thought and process around that. But I, yeah. I do like that idea, having been in largely IT organizations most of my career of encouraging people to go and self-solve, even if they just do a mock-up. I mean, I yeah. remember people bringing to us 
uh, I, I ran a, a shared services team for years and people would bring like a mock-up that they built in PowerPoint. Here's how I want it to, this is what I needed yeah, to right. do. It was like, Hey, well, that's a is. lot more to go in for IT yeah, yeah, than yeah. go and build a solution, you know? Much better, yeah, than an email, yeah, yeah indeed. The, 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 the flip side of that is organizations need to be looking at the solutions that their people are, they, they can't just say, oh, yeah, well, it's, it's going to be scalable. It'll fix, it, it, it'll work. Uh, it, it'll yeah. be secure. It, we're compliant. Like, no, you can't just assume those things. You need to have <laughs> a process to review. Yeah. I mean, it's good because you allow people to think deeply on the problem. Yeah, sometimes, of course, the customer will come up with a solution that they imagine, and maybe they don't know that there's some other technology that can maybe make things better. But in terms of uh, interface, it's very, very helpful what they imagine, because it's what will feel natural to them. And uh, if you have something better that you think it's better, then you have to prove it. It's like, uh, but they, they already have some idea. And well... I don't know. That's what I like, uh, especially on BI, you know, having one feet on the technical side and one feet on the business side, you need to learn so many things. Now I'm like, I don't know, I'm in loans. There's so many concepts going on. I have to learn so, all these things to, to, to make sense of all the data that is going about. And um, well, and then it was uh, hotel reservations or anything that comes into the, the business. And it's, it's fun. It's fun, actually. But I actually like the fact that not being there forever you know it's, it's like kind of a story that you live you help you do your best and it's like okay now you're good to go and, yeah. and you can take on another challenge well that's yeah, that's that's, that, I, I, that's something about you know the I, I think about the the gig economy and you know and project workers or consultants and for for many years i mean I, i'd say the first half of my career you know, it was almost like looked down upon. It's like, oh, you worked on that project for four months, and then you went and did something else. Like, whoa, you can't hold down a regular job. It's like, well, hiring a lot of these people. It's like, look, I hired them to solve that problem. They did. Yeah. We looked around for some other things. Maybe there's another project or not. But there's, it's, it's much more acceptable now to think that way mm. about finding skilled personnel to build things. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. But after all, it's also about helping people get things done you know and this is always a good thing to do and uh that's i think that's what i like most about this job is the fact that i can help people like you know? yeah we have this problem and I go, okay we can do it this way and i'm like oh beautiful and i'm like okay let's do this and uh yeah and it's quite creative after all i mean even if we're like we have a very you know fixed outcome what they what they want and how it, it should look at the same time now there's even more options than there used to be. And like, oh, should we do that in Data Factory or SSIS or I don't know, Power Query? I don't know. There, there's so many right. interactions between the different technologies now. It's like, oh, well, we could start with this and then maybe we'll move to some other thing else. And even from the technology side, it's not so square as I believed it used to be, at least. Right. And also from the governance side, now I'm in the Melissa Coates course and also like, well, you could do this or you could do that. It depends on your organization and what you value most on how the culture is. And uh, so at the end of the day, it's like, okay, now you think a lot and like, okay, let's go this way. And from there, we'll take it. If it's wrong, then we'll change course. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, yeah. we'll stick with it. Uh, yeah, I cannot do much better than this. My, my philosophy is always, it's like, well, let's, let's move things forward. You can't, uh, I mean, you yeah. can't measure what you've not taken action on, what you've not moved forward on. Just to learn from that, go and iterate, yeah. fail quickly, learn from it, exactly. improve upon it. Yeah. Yeah. Get your best decision with what you have now. And then maybe later right. you'll have more things and then you'll have a better decision, but uh, right. it's okay. It's okay. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of the, that's the secret to management. It's, it's, it is management is about making decisions for the business and you you have to make decisions based on limited data and so you you do your best with the data that you have and then you learn and you adjust as you go yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that's what I, part of what i like about a lot of the the data platform space the power platform space is that mm -hmm. you know again let's go and iterate let's iterate on this let's build a solution that solves this then you know because the other the other problem this goes back to my business analyst role at the beginning of my career it's like it, you know when do you ask people like well what are you trying to achieve what are your what do you want out of this solution and people will share their requirements the desired outcomes based on their lens of understanding today so if mm -hmm. they 
they're going to go and give you the requirements based on what they think the limitations are of the system. Yeah. So if you go in and show them all this fancy advanced capability, like we could do all these things, suddenly their requirements will pile up. You know, yep. they'll get very creative. So then you have to kind of pare it down. Like, what do you, what do you actually need there? And so that's why the iterative process yeah. allows you to help them envision what else you could do, which opens up their minds to, Hey, you know, I didn't even think of this. If we can do that, then that allows us to also do this, these other things, integrate with this other system or True. automate this yeah, aspect. Uh, the, the, this style is still hard to sell, at least uh, here in, in Barcelona. It's like, look, uh, just assign us like some people and we'll work and the better and you'll see uh, like yeah but we need a date and a cost it was like oh, okay well, let's yeah. go waterfall then <laughs> it's like, right yeah it, it's complicated i mean at the end it might look like it but uh it's, it would be easier if they get on board and, and 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 trust that the system will provide value to them you know right now that that's that is the uh the dilemma a, a dilemma of modern development is exactly that Mm. I mean, cool. because there, there are teams that maybe will not deliver that value. So I understand that it's not, <laughs> the, I yeah. mean, they could go yeah, yeah. on and on forever, you know? So they, they want to have something to say, hey, you said you would have this and you don't have it. So right. uh, no. well, that's, that's why I go back to what I said. It, it, it's great to have, you know, citizen developers in there. It's like, hey, this is, this yeah. is working or we get 80% of what we need here. Here's what they did. You might then go in there and say, well, yeah, but it's not from a governance standpoint, you're not compliant with these things that you need. It's unsecure in these ways, but you understand what they're trying to do and then can mm -hmm. re-architect or modify and, and go from there. Or start from scratch, which happens. Or, or scrap sometimes. entirely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but even scrapping it entirely, but yeah. you have an idea of what their is the what expected behavior, what they need. Yeah, that is that. true. That so, is true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've seen all possibilities already. Like some companies, it's, like, it's a free for all. Everybody do whatever they feel like. Some other companies, they have like a reporting department. Nobody gets hands on the data outside that department. You have all the possibilities out there. And well, it's good to get used to them. Yeah. Well, again, that's, that's why I said it feels so much like that's where I started with my career. It felt like that. It was a bit of the wild west we're trying to do more with with that but we're we'd have outside you know, consultants and be like want to mm -hmm. go and re-architect we're like yeah that's yeah. fine but we're we're live we're in production so we're, we're we want to modify we want to improve it we want to build the, the the newer model that's yeah. more secure and all those things but we can't stop what we're doing today Ooh, okay yeah <laughs> anyway yeah. so yeah that was a different world that was a long time ago i'm old but that's all right <laughs> Well, any, anything else that you're really passionate about right like now? We just had Inspire. You know, there's a bunch of product announcements, a bunch of things that happen out of that. Anything that just yeah. like has stood out to you that you're really passionate about? Uh, new developments. Uh, I don't know. I'm, you know, uh, one of my two topics that are more like more that uh, people associate with me <laughs> more and more is like one is calculation groups, which is uh, which I think there's something coming up from what I've seen on Twitter. So we'll see how, what happens if they finally arrive in the desktop or what. And then um, there's a, well, uh, the C-sharp scripts for um, Tabular Editor. Mm -hmm. They finally have like some IntelliSense built in the in Tabular Editor 3. And, uh, and then uh, hopefully uh, like custom classes will be stored easily soon. We'll see how that works as well. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just uh, I, I I like to promote these two worlds and they, which combine quite a lot. And I've been signing up for uh, presentations like uh, in Spanish, English, and Japanese, which I signed late yesterday for uh, two presentations, which I I still haven't figured out how I will do them. I did one last year in December, and uh, that was very very good in a, in a way because uh, I, I used to do them like in a PowerPoint and then jumping into the Power BI desktop and showing something back and forth. But um, Japanese people, there's something that they like very much. And that is something that is easy to understand, which probably everybody likes, but Japanese people like it more, I think. Mm. If somebody says to your presentation, that was easy to understand, you should take that with the most valuable thing ever. I mean, they, they love that. Yeah. Mm. So um, 
not that mine was like that, but that, but uh, in the rehearsal process, which was very um, kindly offered by one one of who is now in the cut team, so Aiki Sui, and and then another one of the um, group uh, organizers there in Japan. Uh, it was clear that it was not easy to understand what I was, my approach. Yeah. And then I re decided to redesign the whole presentation and do it all inside Power BI Desktop. Because he was like, okay, you mean that? Okay, show me. And then boom, I have to go I'm like, oh. So I then said, I can show people directly in Power BI Desktop. It, it was a pain to set up because you have to set up so many bookmarks and stuff and so on. But after that, you put that bookmark visor thing then would you just click next, 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 next. And you can do sort of a Power BI and inter interact with the, all of the Power BI, no, not just the report, but also you can show people how's the definition of the measure or how the table looks like. Right. And then jump into Power um, Tabular Editor and so back and forth. So, and I think that uh, was a big improvement to my presentation. So I'm very glad I did that. We'll see how these next presentations go. Uh, one is an introduction to C sharp scripts. And the other one is about uh, data validation in Power BI, which is like something I've come back to a few times and then I put all the topics together in one presentation. So things that you can check about your data. I mean, you should not blindly trust your data. Yeah. So some yeah. things might be wrong. And if you're lucky, it will break your loading process, but you should yeah. be sure, I mean, that it loads, but also if something left out because of errors, Right. Also about the referential integrity. Do you have things missing on your dimensions? Yeah. And then the other one is like a business logic. I mean, maybe there's a field that can have two values and then suddenly a third value appears. Uh, I mean, most of the cases, maybe you don't need all those checks, but if you need them, how should you go about it? And then there's some scripts that make most of this work easy and uh, to have like some summary and then some dynamic button and I don't know. This I'll be showing as well in, uh, I'll go live in, uh, in Sweden this year. <laughs> I'll be traveling there on my own <laughs> with my yeah. family. We will just yep. like the uh, end of the summer. And- um, Are all these primarily community events like the the, ja the Japan uh, events? Japan that... one is a data platform event. Yeah, I think it's a bit bigger than the regular user group thing. Yeah. And uh, the one in Sweden is the Data Saturdays. So I really don't know much, but I think it's a bit larger than the, yeah. the, the user group. Kind of the theme of the other events. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah the, I don't know. I had a friend there. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll send a session. If I get accepted, I'll go visit her. And uh, yeah, yeah. So, so that's what we'll do. Well, that's another thing for, for people you know, that, that are want to kind of get into this, uh, you know, it, it, you're speaking and sharing more like the community. It's like user groups are really easy to go into. Everybody, like everybody's always looking for speakers. There's a lot yeah. of opportunities for brand new people, even if you've never done a presentation before. But some of these larger events, and there was like SQL Saturday and SharePoint Saturday, now yeah. Community Days, and there's all versions of those all over the place as well that people can get mm -hmm. into depending on your focus area. There's yeah. Azure events that are happening all the time. There's a lot of ways that you can go and- totally. it, if you want to share the project that you're working on at work that you're proud of, and yeah. it doesn't mean you're an expert in all things, but here's what we did. Yeah. Here's how we did it. Yeah. Here's how we answer this, this issue and share that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great way to get started. Yeah. Actually, when I started, I did that first one, like without thinking much on the Power BI bootcamp. And then later I realized that there's a reason an event called like new stars of data or something like this. Hmm which is especially focused on new speakers. Yeah. But then because I had already presented, it was like uh, not eligible anymore. <laughs> it was like, mm -hmm. okay, whatever. I like just roll on with the next event. Yeah. And yeah. And then, uh, but, but you need really to be careful because sometimes you sign up for too many things and then you end up stressed out for something that is completely volunteer. It was like, it doesn't make any sense, you know? Well, it's, it's the FOMO. It's the fear of missing out. A lot of people get that. I, I can proudly say that for the most part, I do not have FOMO anymore. <laughs> That's a good uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you have to just let go and, and uh, you don't need to be everywhere and do everything. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Well, very cool. Well, Bernard it's really great to, uh, to, to meet you. I hope to uh, see you more than virtually at some point. And 
yeah. get over to your part of the world. So uh, sure. you know, we'll, we'll keep in touch. And but, but thanks for participating in this, this series. And for folks that want to get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you via social or otherwise? Yeah, I would say Twitter is a great place to find me. So Agulio Barnett. And uh, otherwise, LinkedIn is also there. And I do even have my email on my MVP page. So feel free to contact, especially if it's about calculation groups and C sharp scripts. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, really appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Wow.